Well, I hope that school wasn't such a blur that you've never heard or recall or can't recall something called SOCATOA, which helps us to remember the formulas for the sine function, the cosine function, and the tangent. So the sine function looks something like this. Sine of the angle in degrees is equal to the opposite length divided by the hypotenuse length. That's this guy. Here's the S, there's the O, and there's the H. S-O-H. I, can I suggest that when you write this out, if you were to do this, S-O-H, it's going to make a whole lot more sense to you. Just set it up in a, in a triangle like this. Now, if you are looking for the sine angle, put the angle in there. If you're looking for the sine angle, it's going to be equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Nothing earth shattering there. O is over H, like that. However, if you're looking for the length of the opposite side, so if I want to know the opposite length, it will be equal to the sine of the angle times a hypotenuse because they're beside each other. In this first case, they were on top of each other. So when two things are over each other, it means we're dividing. In this case, it's going to be the sine of the angle times the hypotenuse length. What if I'm looking for the hypotenuse length? So I want to know hypotenuse. It will be equal to O, or opposite length, over sine angle. Opposite divided by the sine of the angle. So what does this look like? Uh, if I have an angle, right angle triangle like this, And let's say I know the angle. I'm just going to throw a number out there, 30 degrees. And in this formula, I would know, or I'm looking for, either the opposite length or the hypotenuse length. Opposite or hypotenuse. So when it comes to the sine function, it never, ever includes the length of the side, which is the side or adjacent to the angle. The other case of this might be if I have a triangle like this, and I know this angle, let's say this is 60 degrees, then this is now the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is never going to change. It's going to always be straight across from the 90 degree corner. What about the cosine function? What does that look like? Well, it, it says that the cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent length divided by the hypotenuse length. Set it up like our little triangle from before. CAH, cosine angle, adjacent hypotenuse. Put that inside of a triangle, and it'll be easier for you to remember how this thing works. So for example, here I have a triangle. And I have an angle. Let's say that this is 30 degrees as an example. So here's the 30. 30 would be into this little bit here. Then the adjacent and the hypotenuse sides I either have or I'm looking for. This is always the hypotenuse. And in the case of the angle being in this corner right here, it means that this is the other side that I have or I'm looking for. This op opposite from the angle would never come into the question. Not part of the, the deal. The other way that this would work is if I had a triangle like this. And let's say I knew this angle. I'm going to call it 60 degrees. Now this would be the adjacent side, and this would be the hypotenuse. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of these guys and replace them with something which is better, and, and you've seen me do before. And this so, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to go S-O, 
H and the CA will be C A H and the TOA will be T O A like this and just putting them into this triangle is going to help us remember how to manipulate the, the formula. So I'm just going to do that. And I've had lots of great feedback from students who say, wow, this really this real, really helps me understand this because they thought there was some sort of uh, voodoo magic with this stuff. It, it's not really. It's, it's quite simple. And, and actually, most things are quite simple once you understand them, and that's the trick. So there's our, our setup. Now, for example, if, if I had a triangle, and, and this is going to stay in the hypothetical realm, I'm not going to give any um, real-life examples yet, but I'm going to stick to the hypothetical uh, realm here. If I had a triangle, and I knew that this lower angle was 29 degrees, and I knew that this length was 36 meters, for example, and I wanted to know the length of the hypotenuse, what, what steps would I take to figure this out? Well, let's see, we have the angle, and we have the length that is adjacent to the angle, it's beside it, and I have the hypotenuse. So it's the adjacent and the hypotenuse. The only one that fits that bill is this guy right here in the middle. It is the cosine. So I take the 29, degrees like this and the adjacent length 36 is above like this and the hypotenuse is the thing I want to know like that and it's inside my triangle just like I've laid out oh sorry about the, got the wobbles there and so now H here is equal to 36 divided by the cosine of 29 degrees and I've got my calculator just sitting here beside me and so if I go cosine 29 equals comes up with a number 0.87461 so this number here is equal to 0.87461 this is dead simple. Now all I have to do is take 36 and divide by that number. 36 divided by 0 0.87461 equals 41.2, let's say. So the hypotenuse is 41.2 meters, which makes sense. I could do this step all at once and I'll just do it here on my calculator 36 divided by cosine 29 and then I have to put a bracket in and then equals and I've got the number immediately all right I'm going to get rid of this stuff and give you another example and it's when things are looking a little bit different so here's the second case. Let's say that I know that this angle is 31 degrees and I know that the hypotenuse is 45 meters long and I'm trying to find out what the length of this side down here is. Side length. Since I have this angle and I have the hypotenuse and I'm looking for the side length adjacent to the angle, it's the same as before. I have this guy, I have the hypotenuse, and I'm looking for the adjacent. So to put this into the same form as this triangle, I would go cosine 31 degrees, multiplied, see how they're across from each other, that means multiplication, hypotenuse, so 45 and I'm looking for the adjacent, which is up at the top. Same thing if I put it into my giant triangle, like this. 
these two numbers are multiplied by each other and that will give me the adjacent length. So the long way around this is to simply find out what is the cosine of 31 degrees. So in my calculator right now, I'm just typing cosine 31 equals, and it's 0 0.8572. 0 0.8572. I multiply that by 45. So times 45 in my calculator comes up with 38.6 roughly equals 38.6. So this side here is actually 38.6 meters long, which sort of makes sense if the hypotenuse is 45. Oh, it's not so bad. Uh, let me get rid of some of this stuff. And let's try a different case. What if I knew the length of the hypotenuse and I knew the length of this lower leg and I was trying to find out what this angle was. Oh, now what? Well, once again, I'm looking for this angle. I know the side adjacent to the angle and I know the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use this guy again. Here's the adjacent, here's the hypotenuse. So I use the cosine function. So it's going to look like this. Cosine of the unknown, I'm going to use a uh, question mark. Cosine of the question mark is equal to A adjacent or 57 over H here, which is 63. Remember, I'm writing it in the form of the triangle. You can see this. Cosine of angle is equal to 57 divided by 63. So watch out. Cosine of the angle, the unknown, is equal to 57 over 63. So what I'm going to do in my calculator is I'm going to go 57 divided by 63 equals. And it comes with up with 0 0.9048, let's say. 57 divided by 63 is equal to 0 0.9048, roughly. Now I'm going to leave that number in my calculator, and I'm going to go shift cosine, and then put that number in, and I end up with 25.2, 25.2. Now your calculators may work differently than mine because many calculators do work a little bit different. But in this case, this is the answer. This is 25.2 degrees. Where you would use that shift cosine function is where you don't know the angle. This goes for all the other trig functions as well. If it's the angle you are seeking, you have to do the inverse function of whichever one you're, you're wanting to use, whether it's shift of the tangent or, sorry, inverse of the tangent or inverse of the cosine or inverse of the sine function. It's when you're looking for that angle, that's when you're going to do the inverse of the button. Shift cosine, shift sine shift tangent will find out the angle.